I saw people in the hundreds and in the thousands falling in. An angel is standing behind me, a big tall angel standing behind me, and he's taking me on a journey. The angel's showing us, he says to me, Welcome to the channel, this is your host King Nana and today I'm going to be talking about my experience seeing hell. Now when I say my experience seeing hell, it's not like a lot of the visions you've had, you, you've seen people have, you know. Um, I mean, I respect their visions and encounters but you know a lot of people actually went to hell and you know some people actually felt the heat of it and I'm like rah fam. I'm so grateful I didn't have that experience, you know, but I have experienced seeing it in a dream. Now, the reason why I want to share this is not so much about the encounter itself, but more about what surrounds it to give you guys a lot of encouragement and um, a lot of hope. So I'm the youngest of eight siblings and you might think that's a lot of people, but my granddad had 45 children, that's right. 45 children well apparently it was 67 children but 45 recorded children but anyway um the brother who is just you know the one who's just older than me the one who's just above me he was not into god you know when i got saved you know when my mom got saved we were on fire for the lord you know we loved praying together we loved you know sharing the word and stuff like that this brother, he just weren't interested. Now, I know you've probably got a sibling that's like that, you know, maybe a cousin or even a parent who's like that. So listen, make sure you're paying attention because this testimony is a game changer. Now, with this brother, he's never liked church. He's never liked the things of God. He's never really been into, you know, prayer and Bible and stuff like that. I remember when my mom would like at the end of the day call us to come and pray he would stand there with his eyes open like we're all praying and i would open my eye and he's just there like he's just not interested i remember the times when my mom would um ask us to sit down so she can read the scripture to us he didn't even come he was not interested you know um my mom used to pray over him because he was so bad when i say bad like he would be shouting at her, he would be coming home at um, 6 in the morning. Like, where? who goes out and comes back at 6 in the morning? Like, the whole day and you come back at 6 in the morning and he will come back with red eyes. Like, I don't know what he was doing, <laughs> but I got to learn he was out drinking with friends and doing all sorts of stuff. I don't want to embarrass him, you know. For some of you know him, he's my big brother chief. Now, in his wild season of life, yeah, <laughs> Let's just name it his wild season of life. Some of you have had like a wild season of life. When he was in that, we were praying for him, you know? I, I just felt like I needed to pray for him. My mom was always praying for him. I remember thinking to myself, what if my big brother goes to hell when he dies? Like, I don't want that. I remember being in tears one day in prayer. My mom would always be up early praying, praying for him. Now, one day she came into the room you know, she was praying for him. I remember that, like, because we had a bunk bed. So I'm on the bottom bunk and, you know, he slept on the top top bunk because um, we shared a room at the time. Now, it was crazy. So, let me take it back a bit. I'm having a dream. I'm asleep on my bed. I'm having a dream. And in this dream, an angel is standing behind me, a big tall angel standing behind me. And he's taking me on a journey. He's, I'm with my brother in the dream, my big brother chief. The angel showing us, he says to me, this is where they take them when they're about to be judged. Now, bear in mind, I understand that dreams can be very symbolic. So I'm not saying that there is actually a place like this. I'm just saying that the angel showed us. The people that he showed us had uh, chains on their wrists, on their waist and on their ankles. The ankles, like the chains would be joined, the wrist chains were joined, and then the waist. So the angel's taking us and saying, this is where they take them when they're about to be judged. And then all of a sudden, like I see a big queue of them, by the way. I see a big queue of people being lined up to go to some kind of a place of judgment or something. Now, I, you know when sometimes in dreams, like the scene changes? Yeah, so that's what happened. The scene changed 
and the best way I can describe it is that we're floating over the mouth of hell so myself my big brother and the angel that was showing us around and he was basically showing us what when people enter hell and I remember thinking to myself I remember like the feeling of the hopelessness that it had there like as if there's no way of coming back I saw people in the hundreds and in the thousands falling in imagine a big hole and it's like lava you know fire lava um, flowing like downwards and people were screaming people it was dark but I could see it was dark but I could see the things of the spirit sometimes they're a bit uh, difficult to explain but people were falling in and I remember seeing like they were naked and I remember thinking they've not come here with anything that they had on earth they were naked I remember seeing a woman holding her head screaming screaming this woman was holding her head and screaming loud as she was burning I remember seeing um, different levels I remember as we were looking over seeing different levels and for some reason it's like you know you're not taught like the angel wasn't the one telling me this but I just knew that there were different levels even though it was all bad but it got worse the lower down you went and at the very bottom I saw I had a knowing that this was like the darkest place I couldn't really see anything but I had a knowing that the people that were down there were the ones who were once believers that turned away from Christ willingly without accepting restoration like people who had turned away and rejected him willingly after salvation you know now of course everyone has their different beliefs and stuff like that but I'm just telling you what I saw now as I was watching this the angel was speaking to us and then my brother spoke to the angel and said I will change because of what we were witnessing he was repeating it he said I'll change I'll change I'll change I'll change now here's the part I want you to listen to at that moment I woke up from the dream and when I woke up, my mum, who I told you, would sometimes just, you know, enter the room and start praying over him, anointing him with oil in his sleep. I'm sure you've got like a praying mum or maybe a grandma or someone in the family who's just really prayerful. And maybe at a point they probably annoyed you with their prayers because they were always praying. You were trying to sleep and they're praying over you. Yeah, that was my mum. But she was doing it over him. So I'm on the bottom bunk, bottom bunk and I'm like literally waking up to see my mum praying over my brother on the top bunk saying to him you must change you must change you must change in his sleep like <laughs> you know what I'm saying no like, not his he I think he had woken up I beg your pardon he had woken up and she was saying you must change you must change but I was the one waking up and then in the dream he was saying I will change I will change I wake up and I hear my mum saying you must change you must change so imagine like the dream and reality merging so I'm coming out from the dream hearing my brother say, I will change. And then I listen to my mum saying, you must change. So I'm half awake, but I say to my mum, 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 it's okay. He's going to change. He's going to change. I kid you not. Nothing happened over the first few weeks. He was still the same. In a matter of weeks, he went to church one day because my mum eventually convinced him to come to church. He's coming to church. You know, we had already been at church and here he is on his way to church but my pastor who was on his way up meets him downstairs and actually leads him to Christ speaks to him preaches the gospel and leads him to Christ on the road literally my pastor was coming up from his car and led him to Christ on the road so weeks later it was around Easter at that time weeks later he meets my pastor coming up the stairs again and my pastor gives him his Bible my pastor gives my brother his own Bible and says here I want to give you this it's yours to keep to you that's probably like oh, okay but I'm a pastor right and I know how much you value your own Bible you would not just give it to anyone you'd rather buy them a Bible he gave him his own Bible to me it was like a prophetic act it was symbolic it was almost like, you know like in the Old Testament, God would tell the people to do something to represent what he was about to do. Yeah. So for me, I see that as a 100% prophetic act of what was to come. Because it was not long afterwards he started changing. You know, he gave his life to Christ, he received the Bible on Easter. And I remember telling him, I remember telling him, do you know what that means for, your, for our pastor to give you his Bible? 
that's not normal. And at the time I wasn't a pastor, okay, but I, I just knew that it wasn't normal. So, um, yeah, so time went on, time went on. This boy, this man, <laughs> changed, my big brother, he changed. He started coming to church. He started praying, reading his Bible by himself. He would be asking me questions from the Bible. He still does, you know, but he's very teachable. But I mean, in his, he would be asking me questions. He would be, I would hear him at a point. I got my room, he got his room. I would hear him in his room praying. I'm telling you, I would hear him worshiping. I remember one day like coming on the bus. Um, it was High Street Kensington around there. I'm looking on the bus, I'm looking down and I look and see someone preaching to somebody or talking to somebody and it's my brother so I get off and come and like I walk from behind him, he didn't see me and he's preaching the gospel to some guy I cannot give God enough glory someone who was so hardened to, to prayer, to church, to Christ, to everything that was godly and now seeing him going after God in a certain way I cannot give God enough glory. Now he's doing all the things he's doing. In fact, I remember there was a time, right? Because, like I said, I had my own room at a point. He had his own room. When my sister moved out, I took her room. I was like, yeah, let me have this room. <laughs> and I started, you know, living in that room. One day, I'm in the room. I think I was reading the Bible or listening to like a preaching message. It was late, late, late at night. He knocks on my door. And comes in his eyes are teary I'm wondering what's happening he comes in looking like he's had some kind of an encounter and he says I just saw Jesus I just saw Jesus I just saw Je I said wait wait what I said wait, wait 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 what he said I just saw Jesus I had a dream and maybe I'll leave it to him you know one day I'll get him on my channel to come and share um, his encounter you know with with Jesus um, in the in that dream it was a dream but um, since that day he changed he changed there was like there's been landmarks from when he got saved when he received the Bible um, and when he saw Jesus it's like it took him to another level now this same person who had no interest in God when we were trying to get him to just come and pray family prayer before we go to bed you know quick prayer well I say quick prayer but you know family prayers can be like <laughs> But I would say, you know, my mom would say, just come, we're going to pray. He wouldn't even come. Or if he would come, his eyes would be open. He was just like, it's like, I'm just here to tick the box. Now, this guy not only preaches the gospel on the road, he pastors a church. This guy prays. I mean, sometimes he'll call me and encourage me with a verse. He's into God. Like, he's actually into God. He loves God. The man loves God. You see? Um, so... The reason I've wanted to share this primarily is not so much just about the encounter but it's more to do with not giving up on people in your family that are hardened to God. People in your family that are not interested in church and Christ and the Bible and prayer. People who look like they're not interested because the reality is many of us, you've, you've got like a cousin, a sibling, even a parent or maybe a child depending on, you know, where you are at life in life um, somebody who, who seems to be like neglecting the gospel or neglecting your advice you've told them you've encouraged them you've you've been preaching to them you know come to the come to the Lord come to Christ you know inviting them to church even maybe but they're just ignoring you they look uninterested the Bible says this the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak don't give up because you're speaking to them and they look uninterested their spirit man is hungry for God. So I wanna encourage you, whether it's a brother, a sister, an auntie, an uncle, a cousin, a friend, a colleague, don't stop praying for that person. That, that same person who looks like they would never even step foot in a church, or they would never even, you know, kneel down and say a word of prayer. They would never even respond to the word of God. Don't give up on that person. You know, the Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. If God can save you, if God can save me, if God can save my brother, who can't he save? Not only save them, but flip the script on the enemy. Like, God flipped the script. If the devil was looking at my brother and laughing like, you know, thinking he's mine, it was just 
a matter of time before God just says, okay, let me flip the script and show you who he belongs to. I am the Alpha and Omega. I am the beginning and the end. I am the author and finisher of your faith. I want to encourage you, don't give up on people. Keep on preaching the gospel. Keep on praying for people. And at the end of it all, we'll give God glory because when we all get to heaven, like the song says, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing it will be. So think about heaven. Think about, you know, one day being there with that person. Let that be your motivation. I want to speak to those of you who are watching. Maybe you've been sent this video by someone who is a friend of yours. You're not really into God. You're not really into Christ. But I want to tell you that Jesus Christ loves you. You were born on this earth for a purpose. You were born for a purpose. And that purpose was a God-given purpose. And you can't go on living life without him. You know, he loves you. He died for you. 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ died for you on the cross. Why? So that you can have salvation freely. He wants you to be saved freely. There is a heaven, there is a hell. There's a heaven in, you know, eternity. We're going to go there. It's a place of joy. It's a place of bliss. The Bible says we will walk on streets of gold. You know, the streets, like what we value here, we walk on it there. But there is also a hell. And hell is a place of torture and damnation. You know, and once you're there, you're there forever. Don't leave it too late. My faith in God has, has saved me. Your faith, your faith in God will save you from a life of eternity in, in hell. Okay, so I want you to extend your faith to God's outstretched hand as he's saying, receive me as your father, receive me as your savior. Okay, so I want you to just pray this prayer with me. Maybe, you know, I may never hear about this until eternity, but pray it regardless. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you today just as I am. I believe Jesus Christ died for my sins. Say it. Say, I believe Jesus died for my sins. I believe that he rose up from the dead and because of his death I am forgiven because of his blood I am washed clean because he is raised from the dead I live a new life in Christ I belong to Jesus I will serve you no more Satan in Jesus mighty name amen now if you've prayed that prayer please do let me know you know you can get in touch with me either on my email address which will be in the description box or you can drop a comment in the comment section if you don't mind. Um, regardless, let me know, okay? For those of you who just watched and been encouraged, make sure you like, subscribe, share it with somebody. You don't know who's on the brink of giving up, praying for a sibling or praying for a friend or a colleague. So share it, share it. Like, spread the good news, spread the gospel, and hopefully we'll see many people in heaven because of this video. God richly bless you. Keep shining. Peace.